any ways to it. Okay, so what I want to know how much have you understood about polymers? Now I have I will have to call your name, right? Ishika? Have you understood anything about polymers? Ishika, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay, so tell me what have you understood about polymers? Like summarize till now. Hmm? What summarize till now? Till now what I have understood that you are asking. Yes. I'm asking what do you understand about polymers? You should summarize it, maybe in one or two sentences. Okay. Suraj, can you tell me? You have done half of the course, right? One basic idea about it. So like... Uh... I like, am unable to form a sentence, sir. Like I, I like a proper should, sentence. Should we do an English class then? <laughs> no, sir. I cannot help you in forming sentences, Suraj. Sir, like they are not crystalline, means base uh, amorphous. Mm. Okay. Mm. And which? Type of polymers have you studied? Any any specific example have you studied? Sir, a lot of them I like sir PVC like. So PVC falls in which category of polymers? What are the categories of polymers you know? Okay, Suraj, can you answer? Yes, sir. Uh, like PVC is um, additional polymer. Like there are two, two categories, additional and condensation polymers. Mm -hmm. So polymers are a wide range of material. Like they can be crystalline, amorphous, or they can be melt at low temperature. And there can be some that do not melt at very high temperature also. So it's very okay. uh, wide range of material. Fair enough. So the definitions of amorphous and crystalline, the, the, those are a little different from what we have understood in metallic materials. Have you heard of elastomers, thermoplastic, duromers, thermostat, not thermostat, thermoplastic? Yes, sir. So what are those? What is elastomer? Like, if we stress them, they they show very high strain. Like, um, like we can stress them. Sir, can you throw some light on this? Do you have any idea? Sir, elastomer is a polymer with you know weak intermolecular forces and generally low Young's modulus with high failure strain uh, compared to other materials. See, it is like if you ask a medicine student, a medical student that what are the symptoms for this disease, the safe way is to say following nausea, headache, uh, fever, cough. These are the symptoms which is in all the almost many of the diseases. So you are you are telling me things which are there in almost all the materials. Okay. So you have to be very specific. If elastomer has high strain, polymer also has high strain in comparison to metallic materials. What is the basic difference between a polymer, let's say, and compare metals? What is the basic difference? Tell me maybe three, four differences between a metal and a polymer. Anyone can do it. So polymers are a material consisting polymers are the materials 
which are consisting very large molecules uh, or macro molecules also and uh, composed of many repeating subunits yeah in metals also you have a repetition of subunits which is a lattice structure which is repeated so there are specific uh, uh, like there are also uh, uh, two specific like you know chlorine or a uh, vinyl acro uh, acrylic these type of things and they make completely different material okay ishika sir the bondings are uh, like uh, like yes they are no like covalent uh, bonds yes. but uh, yes. metals they also have ionic bonds and eh? metals do not have iron bonds no no so polymers are linked with covalent chemical bonds and eh? metals are what kind of bonds metals have no <laughs> sir metal what are ions then do you have metallic, metallic bonds, bonds. Iron, iron. yes sir yeah, what is metallic bond metallic bond no idea what metallic bond is no no sir like uh, Uh, so like uh, one is uh, be sharing like sharing of electrons sir one is becoming positive the other is taking that and becoming negative that kind of but that will become ionic bond one takes an electron and one gives up that becomes an ionic bond in in pure iron wait what are the atoms you have you have iron only so yes, who is sir. taking electron who is giving electron Hmm. <clears throat> anyone can anyone answer what is what is metallic bond? The sharing of the simple uh, bond. The मतलब sharing of bond happens. Charge density होती है बस overlap की है होते हैं polarization वगैरह नहीं होता electrons फ्ली cloud रहता है. Uh, okay. Low okay. ionization energy होती है comparatively ionic bonds है मतलब डिस्टेंस जो रेडियस होता है जो निकल के आता है वो मतलब थोड़ा ज्यादा होता है आयोनिक बैंड से बॉन्ड से कंपेयरटिव ओके ओके गुड सो देयर इज अ कंडक्शन बैंड वेयर इलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर मूविंग इन मेटालिक मटेरियल्स यूजुअली राइट सो देयर आर फ्री इलेक्ट्रॉन्स देयर दैट्स व्हाई मोस्ट मेटल्स आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ देम आर कंडक्टर्स इज देयर एनी मेटल व्हिच इज नॉट अ कंडक्टर आई आई थिंक सो so okay fine so just a second yeah i'm in class i'll call you later that poor okay. conductor sir poor conductor bol sakte hain kyunki jaise jo material zyada heat up ho jate hain wo poor conductors hi hue tungsten wagera tungsten yeah comparatively so like aluminum is a super conductor so comparatively there are more less conductors uh but all of them none of them are actually insulated i believe some of the non metals are conductor like graphite is is a conductor anyway so you should brush up your basics because now you are going for internships and job interviews and if somebody asks you what a metallic bond is and you are not able to answer that then that is not good right and then so after so we have discussed in our previous lecture we have discussed about visco elastic behavior of polymers so polymers there is part of elasticity so there is a behavior of material which is called elasticity what does it mean it means that whatever deformation you give comes back when you unload it question is why why the deformation comes back to its original position after you remove the load tell me the answer in one sentence sentence formation ishika you have to try so why in elastic deformation things come back to their original position why that happens complete silence naga okay friend so yeah so you you heard the question you want me to repeat it 
Sir, repeat the question. No, there is no need now. So, okay, fine. Thank you. Okay, what do I have here? Cello tape. Good. What do I have here? Paper is paper. Yes, it is a paper which is which I have joined at the end. Yeah. So what does it look like? Yes. Loop. Yeah. Any any other name you want to give it? Ishika, what does it look like? It's a ring. Yes, a ring. Yes, a ring. Okay. What will happen? And what do I have here? Scissors, sir. Pair of scissors. Pair. Okay. So, okay. What will happen if I cut it from the middle? Two rings. You get two rings. Two rings. Yeah. Good that you didn't ask me to repeat the question, Naga. So I cut it, and as expected, I made two rings. Right? So this is the magic. Now, let us do some more magic. OK, so if I join this like this, then I make a ring, right? Yes, so sir. It has to be interactive. Try to be on unmute for, let's say, some time. So if I join this and cut from the middle, you know what will happen. If I just give it a twist like this, so instead of having straight like this, I give it a twist and then join it. What will happen? So this has a special it? name or something, I forgot. Yeah. So you know Sir, it is some kind of a strip if we go around twice we return to the same position. Uh, so if you already know what I'm going to do, then the fun is over. Sir, uh, I've seen a video with semi the superconductors like okay. uh, they are Maybe. going in the loop. Yeah. Okay, okay. Fine. So I have joined it like this. Yeah. One twist in this. And now tell me what will happen if I cut it from the middle. क्या होगा शहर्ष बोलो ऐसे साइलेंस रखोगे तो एक घंटा खत्म हो जाएगा वी विल वी विल नॉट बी एबल टू डू एनीथिंग सर देन अगेन इट विल बिकम स्ट्रेट इट विल बिकम्स नॉट लाइक दिस आई एम गोइंग टू कट इट फ्रॉम द मिडल देन वी विल गेट टू ट्विस्टेड रिंग्स टू ट्विस्टेड रिंग ओके सो आई एम नॉट आस्किंग एनीवन एल्स बिकॉज़ आई डोंट वांट टू रिपीट द क्वेश्चन लेट अस सी if i cut it from the middle then i get two twisted rings or not okay i hope you are able to see the whole thing if you are not you yes, should sir. pin this you should pin my screen and then i am cutting it from the middle cutting it from the middle and i have cut it from the middle and what do i get I get a big loop with a twist in it, but yeah, you yes, see? Sir. so it has not separated into two. There is still one single loop with a twist in it. Okay, that was fun. So let us proceed with this kind of thing. So I have one ring here and another ring perpendicular to that. Right? There is no twist in any of these rings. Okay, now tell me what will happen if I cut it from the middle. Tell fast. Sir, hole. Sir, hole. Uh, both will split into. Both uh, will split into two. Okay. So sir, center. Sir, one will split and one ring will break. Yes, one will break. Okay, keep guessing. We will see what happens. So I have sir, cut the sir, first sir, ring. Sir, usko bhi to cut na hoga. Yeah, yeah, I will cut this one also. Don't worry. Sir, ऐसे नहीं मतलब दूसरे उससे. 
No, I have to go from the middle of both rings. And I'm doing exactly that. And I'll show you at the end also. So this becomes a square. What did I do? I cut the first string, which was like this. So I cut the first string from the middle and that separated into two, right? This was the first ring. And then yes. I opened the second ring, also from the middle. So I have not done any mistakes. I have cut both of both the rings from the middle and it becomes a square. Okay. So these disturbances. Sir, I are disturbed. remember yeah. the name of the strip. Sir, yes. Mobius strip. Yes, Mobius loop. Yes. Okay. So this is what you get when I cut two rings with, with no twist. Now I have two rings similar to that. And in each of them, I have a twist in it. Okay. So now can you guess what will happen? If I cut this from the middle. No idea? So let us see then what will happen. So the first one is cut from the middle. Now I have to cut the second one. Okay. So it's a circle. Could be. It's a bigger square. No, it looks like this. Two hearts. Okay, so this was fun and fun is now over. Now let us go back to our whiteboard. But why did we do this? For fun, yes. But apart from that, this is the basic difference between polymers and metals. We don't have uh, atomic arrangement like but we have molecular chains. And if you have to break a covalent bond, you will have to apply a lot of stress on it. So really, if you see that elastic modulus of polymers are actually very, very small in comparison to metals, but breaking a covalent bond is very, it, it takes a lot of energy. So why, why do we have elastic modulus, which is very small in polymers? Sir, original length is not coiled, it is stretched. Yeah. Original length is coiled, it is breaking. Yes. So actually, if you have to break the covalent bond of a polymer, then you will achieve a strength of yield strength, or the failure stress, you will have to apply of the order of 440, 400 to 500 gigapascals. Okay. And that is what you see in Kevlar, where Moria, I think, or two of you presented the armor material in our last course, right? So Kevlar is one example where you have, uh, where you are trying to break the covalent bond. And before that, you are not breaking the covalent bond. And what is happening is you have polymer chains which are looped in between like this, okay? They are looped and they are looped and then you apply stress or strain, whatever, and then they open up. So you must have seen ropes or something, or maybe earphones, which are entangled in each other. And what do you do? So it is not a very, uh, pleasing 
situation which I'm asking you to imagine now. But it, if you have a pet, let's say if you have a cat, then you will see. So there is a there is a tag also for a dog. There is a tag, not a tag, like a rope kind of thing which you put in the neck of the pet. And some of them are automatic, so it comes out. It doesn't matter if it is automatic or not. So you have this long rope which you are tying in the neck of the pet, cat or dog. And while playing with it, sometimes they can get strangled to it. And once they get strangled, what do they do? Have you seen this kind of scene or have you come across this kind of situation ever? Yes, sir. So what do they do? What do they do? No idea. So they they repeat the same mistake over and over again. And in, in doing that, they strangle more and more. So the simple reflex is to, you know, just shake your neck or throw your hands and keep doing that. That's the reflex what animals usually do and they are not trying to open it. And that's how they get strangled in it. And it can be, uh, it can be very serious for them. So, but, so what is happening is if you have an entangled rope or if you have an entangled earphone, what we actually do is we try to untangle it. We try to open it and then we use it because we know that if you just stretch it, the knot will be so tight that you will not be able to open it and maybe you will damage your earphones. But ropes, we are not bothered about because even if it is damaged, we are not bothered about it. But we are bothered a little bit because if you put a very tight knot in a rope, it will be very hard to open it. So what happens is that you have this kind of, so now look at the screen. You have this kind of entangled rope and one of the boy just starts pulling it, right? So the length of the whole thing will increase, but it will stop after some time because you will be creating knots and you will be, uh, so those will act like a barrier. And then the boy stop, stops pulling it. What happens? So for example, this was the initial knot and the boy pulls it and now you have knot which are you know, uh, concentrated at one place. And now the, oh, where are we going? Okay, here. So now the boy has stopped pulling it. Do you think this rope will come back here or this, this situation will acquire this initial uh, situation again? Do you think this will happen to a rope? No, sir. Come again? No, sir. I don't think so, sir. Yeah, this will not happen. Oh, God. So why do you think this will not happen? And it happens in polymers which we saw in our experiment. If you remember, when we did the tensile testing on our, our polymer sample, it is stretched and the color changed and then it broke. And when, when it broke, there was no force applied on it because it was not connected anymore. So after breaking the broken pieces, they came to the same length, to the original length, right? So, which means that this rope actually came back and this whole thing actually acquired this kind of position again. So what is the driving force for that? Here, there is no driving force. But in polymers, there is a driving force which will ask this thing to go back to the initial shape. What is That's that? Secondary intermolecular forces. What is secondary intermolecular forces? Like uh, vulnerable forces, weak forces, hydrogen bonds or vulnerable forces. Primary is a covalent okay. bond. 
Yeah, could be. So Van der Waal forces will break when you go from this situation to that situation. And when you are in this situation, you also have Van der Waals forces. Right, you still have Van der Waals forces. They have just made new uh, connections. Only so, only the combination has changed, right? And now I'm using the right word. So, it there can be two types of coming back. One can be based on the lower energy state. Okay, so if the initial situation has lower energy than the final situation then there is a driving force which will ask this thing to go back to the position whether or not it is initial doesn't matter it has to be the lower energy state reason right and that force will be simply minus du by dx so when there is an energy gradient you always have a force which asks things to go to the lower energy state right this is what why we like to sleep but we don't want to sleep always although that's a lower energy state so you like to sleep but you cannot sleep forever right but then the, that is a different system so one case where energy plays a role and that is called energy elasticity and we are still talking about elastic deformation and the other case could be which is also related to energy but if you know uh, the whole energy lower energy state is coming because of entropy then it is called entropy elasticity and well you don't have to remember these names but you just have to understand this that why this is happening in some cases so for instance the the chain so the the rope is opening up and some of them so now i'll have to use another canvas yeah so the rope is like this and then when you pull it some of it some of it gets elongated like this so here when it is elongated it doesn't have as much freedom or as much movement possible when it is coiled in comparison to when it is coiled although it does it may not look uh, it may not look correct here you may think that when the coil is straight then it should be able to move freely in comparison to when it is coiled but that is not true we have spoken about the steric hindrance you know so if you have carbon atom here and then you have hydrogen there and hydrogen there and hydrogen there and it is a chain which let us say is going in x1 x2 and we have x3 yeah so let us do it in x3 so i have another carbon here and i have hydrogen there and hydrogen there and hydrogen there so now if you now if you look at in the plane x1 x2 then I have first atom here and just behind this I have another atom, right? And I can have a configuration where the atom number one is here, atom number two is just behind it, right? And atom number two can have hydrogen in these directions, right? So you see this is causing uh, a difference so so two type of configurations can be there one configuration is where you have all the hydrogen atoms behind each other and another configuration is you can have a hydrogen uh, so three hydrogen bonds but not hydrogen bonds three bonds which are connecting with the hydrogen atom they are at a rotation so at a different angle from the first one so now i'm creating two different configurations so if i can create more configurations i will have more what entropy because i have more combinations possible 
you remember boltzmann so configurational entropy is the constant boltzmann constant into the logarithm natural logarithm of the number of combinations possible and if i can create more combinations i can create more entropy more configurational entropy right so if i have more configurational entropy then i am decreasing the energy state of the system right so in a coiled structure i can have this is called a steric hindrance so instead of hydrogen if i have oh then oh and h cannot be just behind each other because that will cause uh, you know some repulsion but if you can rotate the second atom so that oh lies here then probably it will be a more suitable situation for the molecular chain to be so that is called a steric hindrance and to reduce its steric hindrance they should have some freedom to rotate and adjust with each other right so two coils can adjust themselves and coil together like this not like this like anything so this is also a coiling where they are folded and somehow they are in a lower energy state for some of the polymers they are in lower energy state right and this is why they want to come back to their their coil structure and i will share a video with you after this lecture in the recording when i upload it and in that video you will see that a watermelon is being dropped from a tower maybe some of you have seen that video maybe not so a watermelon if you drop it from a tower you don't need to drop it from a tower you can drop it from your uh your hostels balconies also and it will shatter in pieces but you coat it with a polymer which is a combination of two different polymers so there is a plasticizer which is a different thing and then there is a polymer which is mdi and that has a long name associated with it so a plasticizer you will see the details there and just combine these two to form a to form a polymer which has urea uh, in between two molecular chains and that you coat it you spray just to spray this thing on the surface of the watermelon and then drop it from that same tower or even higher tower and it will not break you try to cut it from an ax it will not break you have to cut it in a saw in a power saw and you will see all those things in that video so i shouldn't explain that part but but that will tell you the advantage of it and that will also tell you about the elasticity of the polymers so when the watermelon falls on the ground these coils are extending and as soon as it as so there is some energy storage there so watermelon has a shape like this probably i probably cannot find a perfect sphere uh for or made up of anything there is another research going on where people are trying to make a perfect sphere with a different motivation so when the watermelon drops on the ground it takes this kind of shape right so there is some energy goes in in this deformation and because of this storage of energy because it is elastic energy because these coils are extending and that energy is stored in the form of elastic energy and when it is released it will bounce back the watermelon will bounce back right and it will not be broken from the inside also okay so the whole deformation is taken by the elastic deformation of polymers and because polymers have huge tendency to deform elastically so sometimes more than 100% meaning twice of the original length they can deform just elastically and one of the example of this which we broke in our lab was the rubber so the natural rubber there are different types of rubber so natural rubber is an elastomer and basically the whole deformation of that is happening completely elastically so elastic part and viscoelastic part not so much of plasticity is there so in that case 
you see that all the deformation is taken, whatever is taken by the material is released once you unload it. And that gets a lot of advantage to th this kind of material. Right? So, so in the knots, when, so this can be understood, a little bit can be understood by entanglement of knots, although it is uh, even in practical, re, in, in practical lives, understanding knot is not very simple. So you see that whenever you put an earphone in your pocket, very well coiled, okay, you coil it not very nicely and put it in your pocket and then just go for a walk and then take it out and you will see that out of nowhere sometimes it looks like there is a magic going on because so you coil it perfectly like this very neat coiling okay put it in the pocket and then take it out and it will be more complicated than this and you did nothing except walking so you have given some cyclic loading to it but but it looks like you know some of them have has magically gone into each other somehow which would so you have not given that much of uh, display to the coil when you put it in the pocket but magically some of the some of the wires have gone or entangled in such a way that looks impossible that that cannot happen but that does happen okay so in there is a field of knot theory where people study about knots and humans are not so good with knots. We do not know, we cannot understand how to open knots. And there is a special field which studies, I hope you're not sleeping. <laughs> so there is a whole field. No, which, okay. So there's a whole uh, field of uh, scientists who study about knots. And also in the, in the scouts, they teach you about the basic knots. Right. And, uh, and bacteria is one of the organisms which is much better than human in opening knots. And so that's so, and then there, uh, then there are some, uh, some part in the cells which do the opening of the DNA. So when a new fetus is created, then, or when a new cell is created, then a DNA is being reproduced, right? A new cell is being created. So there are a lot of chromosomes which are being recreated again. And in this recreation, there will be some mistakes, right? And 90% of those mistakes are corrected, corrected by the cell but a few of them are not corrected. So this correction and uh, not doing the correction is connected to opening the loop. So DNA is a double helix, you know that it's a double helix. So you have adenine, guamine, and thymine and cytosine. So four proteins are connected with each other and they repeat. And this repetition can be in different uh, order, which makes the uniqueness, and then there is a lot more in DNA. So this, this goes like a double helix column. My pen doesn't work. Oh, now it works. I think, I think it has taken a lot of load. So going time inside percent, and then these will be going in the helix form, double helix, right? And in between you have these bonds of protein. Although it is in two dimension, it, it will look different in three dimension. So these are the side parts and inside you have, so these are just bonds, these are nothing else. In some of the polymers, you have such kind of coiling where the inner side of the polymer is, so, uh, inner side of the polymer. So you have such a coiling that always one kind of, uh, one kind of uh, arrangement happens. 
and we have spoken about arrangements also in the first lecture which was not available so far to you so you should you should watch that yeah and then you will uh, come to know about what kind of arrangement we can have and uh, in some cases you can have an arrangement in tetrafluorobutyl where you have fluorine atoms always on the cover always on the surface of the coil so they will always do this kind of arrangement and because fluorine covers the whole thing always this is how you get a very high very high chemical resistance so or corrosion resistance so this polymer will I think the stylus has some dirt on the tip so so this gives the very high corrosion resistance to this particular type of polymer okay so so i was saying that bacteria has a higher and better tendency of opening a knot so when you have a coiled knot in knot theory you have this uh, symbol when you have to present a knot then you show a loose open uh, thing so open thing means that the wire is going down okay you understand and then another piece of wire will be coming up so when it is continuous it is it means that it is coming above and when it is disconnected it means that this wire so let me make it blue one and then this one so this one is going from above and blue one is going from below so this is the demarcation when you have to represent the coiling in knot theory not in polymers so what bacteria does or what human also can do is in order to in order to uncoil it you just cut it from the below you just cut the blue wire from the below with a scissor and put it from the top put it on the top and join it weld it okay it's it's all theoretical you are not actually doing the welding you are cutting it and joining it and this is called cross cross switching okay and 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 cross switching is one of the mechanism by which you uncoil a knot okay and there are many problems in so there is one special type of knot which is called 10 11 knot i do not know why i am explaining this but maybe because you can earn a lot of money so there is a 10 11 knot which if you, so in the whole world so far people have opened it by using three cross switches if you can open it by two cross switches or one cross switch then you will get a lot of money and fame and these are open problems in knot theory not rele not relevant not irrelevant completely also so bacteria does it also by cross switching bacteria also opens up this kind of dnas and uh, when it has to reproduce some of the proteins and uh, then it, it uncoils it and recoils it so it does it by cross switching and in in when they do it they sometimes made a mistake not only bacteria but when it happens because of some other reason for example uh, because of radiation because of uh, because of also reproduction you have mutation always right so when you are creating a new cell you always have a chance of changing a little bit in the structure and this change will change the behavior the character the physical appearance or the or the inner uh, activity of the person the personality and all those things so so that's how genetic diseases are carried over because 90% of being self corrected by the by the cell itself so it means that whatever was wrong with the parents will carry forward because 90% are going to be carry forward right and it also causes a uh, bad mutation sometimes because some of them are not corrected and that can be good very rarely but can be bad so good mutation happens in a long uh, in a long time it takes a lot of time because it's a uh, uh, so the 
uh, evolution takes a very uh, very basic algorithm of repetition and because it's a very basic algorithm of repetition it takes a huge uh, amount of time to to do any good correction so to result in an, a good evolution but a bad evolution can happen by mistake and it takes very less amount of time for example a nuclear bomb will change the or not it doesn't have to be a bomb a nuclear radiation can cause a genetic mutation which is which may cause five feet in a baby deformity of various kinds and those are the effects which we see still in the area close to jamshedpur where we have uranium uh, uranium refinery extraction plant and the place called jadu goda so you will see a lot of deformity in the local people because of that you will also see in japan and hiroshima and nagasaki because of uh, we all know what happened there okay so so that can cause those kind of thing we have spoken about uh, not much about elastic deformation but basic elastic deformation of polymers we know also metals we know and viscoelasticity we learned in last lecture we talked about metallic analogs in plastic deformation of polymers we can have viscoplasticity but we will not talk about viscoplasticity now in in usual normal plastic deformation first of all you have to understand that the polymers are strain rate dependent and this strain rate dependence is very high and we have seen it uh, in terms of creep and other things so if you plot the strain diagram and if you do the testing at different rates then you will find oh, you will find for the same material it changes in a very predictive way and so on so as you are increasing the strain rate the amount of deformation which the material can take decreases and this you can see in your household take a piece of rubber or take a piece of chewing gum and stretch it and if you stretch it very slowly it can just open up like anything it will stretch to any extreme and then in the second experiment stretch it very fast and you will see that in in one case it will break it with the you can actually measure it so you take a piece of chewing gum and stretch it and it will go like this and then maybe and you will see that it will buckle because of its own weight and if you if you uh, stretch it very fast then you will see that it will break something like this and you will see that this much amount of elongation is much much smaller than this one and that difference has occurred because of change in the strain rate okay so i think we have passed our time in in discussing these things i can probably i cannot complete with so what i wanted to discuss about plastic deformation was two mechanisms one is shear banding and another is crazing and these two are very different sorry very similar to some of the mechanism what we have studied in for metallic materials so crazing i will tell you what crazing it is and i will also share a video about crazing uh, in the recorded lecture so so crazing usually happens in brittle polymers not in ductile polymers in ductile polymers what happens shear banding or shear yielding so in brittle polymers what happens is uh, when you stretch a piece of this brittle polymer then you will see uh, some holes here very small holes okay and you will also see a change in color usually it 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 becomes brighter so it takes a white color and if you put a light from the back side you can see you can see different arrangements in it and this is similar to the duct although it is it happens for brittle polymers in polymers this is similar to what happens in ductile metallic materials where you have void formation and then they join together and then they become a big crack but here they will not join but you will have holes like this and between holes you have what is called micro fibrils 
okay and these fibrils are taking load and then they will also give up so if you have a crack like this in in a polymer then you will see here a zone which becomes light and you will see small holes there so that is called the craze craze zone instead of plastic zone in polymers we have this and the shape is not in the form of plastic zone okay it is like this similar to dugdale's model dugdale's model or it is also called plastic strip model so these are the zones where crazing has happened and this phenomena is usually seen in brittle polymers not in ductile polymers in ductile polymers you will not see these holes coming up these micro voids coming up well see in metals we call it micro voids here we call it cavities okay and you will not see these cavity formation so easily in a ductile polymer because it is ductile so in ductile polymers what you will see will, will it's called shear yielding or shear banding so in that case you will see if you are stretching this piece of material then you will see uh, on 45 degrees uh, some line formation so actually it will look like this on a very on a very uh, on a very big scale i'm making so so all this all this has happened at 45 degrees from both sides approximately 45 degrees and this results in necking in polymers but necking in polymers doesn't mean that it is going to fail once so what is happening is that in this area where this thing actually this thing is not like this and once it has necked a lot of these chains oh that was in the previous thing so a lot of these coiled or folded up chains has aligned together themselves in the neck region and now this alignment is going to get stretched okay and because covalent bond is very very strong the damage will not come to the covalent bond so soon unless there is any other bond which is weaker than this and those so again we are going back to weakest link theory so so covalent bond really do not take the whole deformation here in order to strain a covalent bond you have to apply huge amount of stress so covalent bonds are actually not performing they are not they are not doing anything what is getting deformed at the end is the intermolecular joining of two mers uh so the 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 thing which is joining these two that is but that will be deforming also at the end before that you have this van der waals forces and sliding of the chains over each other those are the, those are the mechanisms which are taking deformation all right so we end the class today and so and also look at the first lecture so that you know what the arrangements are of the polymers so the configurations and all look at that lecture all right is there any question are you guys sleeping no sir no sir, no, sir. <laughs> okay so okay then so we end this session if you don't have any question okay Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you sir.